Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, I'm going to be presenting my updated hurricane season forecast. We have updated every single screen except for, I think, the sheer map and then also obviously the regions map. Everything else has been completely revamped, so I'm excited to present that to you guys today. Anyways, for today's comment of the day, I want to know when do you think our next tropical system is going to be? When do you think we will finally have another one? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video though and first things first, we're taking a look at our regions map, the one that I said is not updated because the regions don't change obviously. Uh, but I wanted to update you guys, not update you guys on this, I wanted to let you guys know about all of these regions. Obviously the Gulf of Mexico is in the Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean's there, the East Coast, you guys know where that is. The two to the right are the ones that confuse people sometimes. OTS stands for out to sea, so if a storm goes over there, we usually consider that out to sea, and that usually means they are not going to impact any land. Bermuda is the only one at risk, basically, at that point, if it heads to that region where we see basically no shaded color there. Also, our main development region, or for short, MDR, this is where most hurricanes and tropical systems begin and then they work their way back westward towards the Caribbean, Gulf of Mexico, East Coast, or out to sea. So they usually begin in this red region. Uh, I would say probably seven times out of ten. Uh, we do see some develop there in the Caribbean sometimes, sometimes in the Gulf, sometimes off the East Coast. But more times than not, they develop here in our main development region, especially once we're in the heart of hurricane season, August, September time frame, especially then. All right, for our sea surface temperature update, this is completely revamped. Every single frame has been updated. Uh, first things first, we have slightly above average sea surface temperatures here for the Gulf, the, east, the southeast coast there, and now even the Caribbean. We actually have moved a lot further south with that. You might remember we had below average sea surface temperatures expected there for the southern Caribbean. That has been definitely receded very, very far southward. Uh, and we see these warm temperatures actually pushing down towards Jamaica, down towards Central America, um, you know, well past Puerto Rico to the south of those areas. That was definitely not the case last time I updated you guys. Uh, so that has been definitely, uh, you know, pushing its way further and further southward. Does this have implications? Definitely does because uh, as those storms move in from the main development region, sometimes they go south of Jamaica, south of Puerto Rico, south of Dominican Republic, uh, and then kind of towards uh, the Yucatan Peninsula. Uh, so if they're in this area and there's above average sea surface temperatures, they might have an easier time developing into a stronger storm or at least maintaining as whatever kind of storm they already are. So uh, yeah, that is definitely massive, massive news there. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to show you guys the moderately above average sea surface temperature. We're going to get an update on what the MDR looks like. And then the two below average sea surface temperature areas, we're going to take a look at those as well in just a moment. All right, now here we are taking a look at that moderately above average sea surface temperatures here. Uh, we see it for offshore of Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Florida there. It no longer extends off the southeast coast. That's a little bit of a wild card for me, so I'm not really feeling confident in that. I do think that the Gulf Coast in some areas in the western Gulf of Mexico will definitely have some further above average sea surface temperatures. And I think, I do, I do suspect that this could actually expand more than just this. Uh, but for now, this is where we're at. By the way, I am going to be making these hurricane season update videos. This is kind of a forecast because we're not nearly to the heart of hurricane season. I'm going to continue to make these probably as hurricane season is ongoing, just to update you guys with what the current sea surface temperatures look like uh, and what the current conditions look like uh, moving forward. Uh, so these will be coming out for months and months and months. Now, here's another slightly above average sea surface temperature area there for the main development region. So basically where we're at with this is we're at below average sea surface temperatures as we speak, but I suspect that things will warm up. This is how a few, probably like our past two or three hurricane seasons have gone. In the springtime, we've had below average sea surface temperatures around for the MDR or main development region, but then basically it begins to warm up as we get closer and closer and closer to the hurricane season. So I do suspect that overall a lot of warming is going to happen there in the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, so for now, we're staying at a slightly above average sea surface temperature region for there. We had a moderately above average sea surface temperature region in our previous update, but we've gone ahead and cut that here. Uh, same thing here for our below average sea surface temperatures in Central America or offshore of Central America. 
we basically have receded this a ton, like I said, and now it's just a little bit of a sliver there of, you know, the, the waters offshore of South America. Very, very interesting there. Our second below average sea surface temperature region here north of Bermuda has not changed too much. It's still there. I checked today. It's very, very much so still around. It's just a cold blob at this point that is sitting north of uh, Bermuda. You can go check that out yourself. But we've added a moderately below average sea surface temperature region here to this area just because of how far uh, below normal things are at this point in that region. They're actually quite far below normal, uh, very, very far below normal. I think things could warm up a little bit, but overall, I mean, it's looking like it's going to at least be moderately below normal sea surface temperatures. Uh, it's super, super, um, super interesting. Super interesting to say the least. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at the wind shear forecast, which again is one that is not updated. So we're basically just going to uh, present that once more just to update everybody. And then we're going to get into the updated development forecast uh, and overall forecast as well in just a moment. All right, now here is that wind shear forecast. And again, like I said, isn't updated at all. We still expect below average wind shear here for most of the Atlantic uh, due to a neutral Enso or La Nina being basically a 99% chance that we're within those two. It's it's so unlikely that we see an El Nino at this point. Uh, so it's a 99% chance, I would say, that we stay within a, either a La Nina or a neutral Enso. For the development forecast, we're expecting below average development there for the Southern uh, Caribbean, obviously, with the temperatures. Um, they're not looking too favorable. Uh, but to the north of that region, we have slightly above average development, and that actually extends well up the east coast as well, uh, where the sea surface temperature should be slightly above average. So that's going to help um, basically keep things uh, pretty good for development. But as we look at the Gulf, it's much better as we see just above average development. The, the temperatures are going to be warmer. Wind shear isn't really a factor here. It's going to be really, really great for development there in the Gulf of Mexico, unfortunately. Uh, things are going to be very favorable for tropical activity. It was pretty favorable last year. I do expect it to be similar, maybe not as as favorable, but we'll have to wait and see for sure. And now the MDR, I have this as a wild card or, you know, I, yeah, I think I said wild card in the last update, but now we're at above average development. There's above average temperatures expected, below average shear. That equals above average development. Uh, so we are expecting above average storms basically to come out of the MDR, uh, which could completely shake up the hurricane season. So we are expecting above average development. Now let's just move on and take a look at that overall forecast. And as you can see, we're taking a look here. Uh, not a lot has been updated, but we do have above average development expected in the blue region, just like on the development forecast. Uh, whereas this was, um, I think it's said like, uh, shear dictates everything is what I said before. Now it's above average development. We know there's probably going to be below average shear. As we move further westward than that, above average activity for the Caribbean there, unfortunately. As more storms come out of the M MDR or main development region, uh, that means more storms likely for the Caribbean because that's usually where they head next. Not as favorable down there to the south like we said, uh, and that's obvious with the below average sea surface temperatures around, and there's usually more shear in this region. We see highest risk, best chance for tropical activity there in the Gulf of Mexico. That is how it was last year. I expect that to be how it is this year. The East Coast is a wild card because it all depends on a high pressure system set up near Bermuda. Or if it's further west or further east, it just, if it's further west, if it's more towards the United States, that will push all the storms into the Gulf of Mexico. If it's further eastward, uh, they will go up the coast. And if it's way further eastward, they won't even touch the coast. They'll go even out the sea from there. Uh, so there's so many different things that can happen there with that east coast region. Anyway, for our amount of storms forecast, nothing has changed here. You could take a look at how many storms we're expecting, how many hurricanes we're expecting, and how many major hurricanes we're expecting. But it's basically above average on each one of those for sure. So you could take a look at that if you're curious. Anyway, for our confidence tab, we are at a four out of six. This is the highest that I will go for a seasonal forecast. I've said that like a trillion times, but I will never go to a five or six on a seasonal forecast, I don't think. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, would you rather us be in a colder pattern this summer or a warmer pattern? And James Marr said, I would rather stay in a colder pattern. For me, the colder, the better. A true winter lover right there. Uh, really, really awesome comment of the day there. Anyway, for today's Patreon Island of the Day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Platinum Patrons, John Bamenic, James Wade, Dovi Nagel, Lerla Pan, and Donna Carnes. 
alongside our Diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Cat Bite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Flago, Garys, John Colisi, and Dwight Phelan as well. If you would like to be a part of our exciting Patreon page, you can do so by joining that awesome Patreon page. I meant to say the patron end screen of the day there, but whatever. Anyway, for today's channel member highlight of the day as well, I would like to thank our weather top dogs, Hair Farms 1 and Cat Bite. If you'd like to join this one, it'll be next to that subscribe button down below. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button. Be sure to leave a comment down below to help that YouTube algorithm out. And be sure to subscribe if you like weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.